Uh, as you know, in response to continuing attacks against U.S. forces to include the attack in northeastern Jor Jordan on January 28th, which killed three U.S. service members, U.S. military forces conducted strikes February 2nd on seven facilities in Iraq and Syria, which included more than 85 targets that Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and affiliated militias have used to attack U.S. forces. The, the facilities struck included command and control operations centers, intelligence centers, rockets, missiles, unmanned aerial vehicle storage, and logistics and munitions supply chain facilities. In Iraq's in Iraq, the targets were located in the vicinity of Al Qaim and Akashat. In Syria, they were in the vicinity of Al Bam, Dawazir, and Al Mayadin. Although we continue to evaluate, we currently assess that we had good effects and that the strikes destroyed or functionally damaged more than 80 targets at the seven facilities. The number of casualties is still being assessed. As Secretary Austin highlighted in his statement, this is the start of our response, and there will be additional actions taken to hold the IRGC and affiliated militias accountable for their attacks on U.S. and coalition forces. We do not see conflict in the Middle East or anywhere else, but attacks on American forces will not be tolerated, and we will continue to take all necessary actions to defend the United States, our forces, and our interests. Separate and distinct from the U.S. strikes in Iraq and Syria are the multinational actions we took on Saturday as part of ongoing international efforts to respond to increased Iranian-backed Houthi destabilizing and illegal activities in the region. On February 3rd, the militaries of the United States and the United Kingdom, with support from Australia, Bahrain, Canada, Denmark, the Netherlands, and New Zealand, conducted additional strikes against military targets in Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen. These strikes were intended to further disrupt and degrade Houthi capabilities to conduct their attacks against U.S. and international vessels lawfully transiting the Red Sea. Coalition forces targeted 13 locations, striking 36 Houthi targets associated with the Houthis' deeply buried weapons storage facilities, missile systems and launchers, air defense systems and radars, all capabilities Houthi militia have used to attack international merchant and naval vessels in the region. As Secretary Austin said, this collective action sends a clear message to the Houthis that they will continue to bear further consequences if they do not end their illegal attacks. The U.S. has also taken unilateral action in self-defense to destroy missile launchers loaded to be fired and unmanned surface vessels prepared for employment by the Houthis, which posed an imminent threat to merchant vessels and U.S. Navy ships in the region, as well as intercepting missiles and attack drones fired at ships in the Red Sea. Again, the U.S. does not want escalation, and these strikes are directly in response to the actions by the Iranian-backed Houthis. However, we will not hesitate to defend lives and the free flow of commerce in one of the world's most critical waterways. Shifting gears, Deputy Secretary of Defense Kathleen Hicks presided over the U.S. Northern Command Change of Command Ceremony today in Colorado Springs to honor General Glenn Van Herc for his three decades of military service and leadership and to welcome General Greg Guillaume as the next commander of U.S. NORTHCOM and the North American Aerospace Defense Command, or NORAD. She was accompanied by Canadian Minister of National Defense, the Honorable Bill Blair, who oversaw the NORAD change of command, as well as Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General C.Q. Brown, Jr., and Chief of the, De of the Defense Staff of the Canadian Armed Forces, General Wayne Eyre. Together, NORTHCOM and NORAD are central to our strong military and ability to defend the homeland, whether it's joint training, education, humanitarian assistance, disaster response, maritime domain awareness, or cyber defense, the NORTHCOM and NORAD Unified Command enhances our common security and deepens our ties to our closest neighbors. Also, U.S. Space Command will host the Global Sentinel annual two-week capstone event starting today through February 16 at Vandenberg Space Force Base, California. Global Sentinel is U.S. Space Command's premier security cooperation effort designed to strengthen and grow international partnerships improve operational collaboration and promote responsible behavior in the space domain. Space operators from 25 nations around the world will collaborate during the two weeks with each participating nation embedded in a regional space operations center while maintaining national command and control of their sensors for planning, tasking, and analysis. For questions on the exercise, I'd refer you to U.S. Space Command Public Affairs. And finally, February marks the beginning of Black History Month, which provides a unique opportunity for the department, our service members, and our nation to celebrate the contributions, achievements, and brave service of black Americans. 
Our military and civilian workforce is strong, diverse, and always ready to defend our nation, our allies, and our interests against modern threats. This month and throughout the year, we will reflect upon and honor the service and sacrifice of black Americans who continue to lead, impact, and shape our nation's rich history and future. Stay with the Times of India for news breaks, analysis, interviews, and events. We bring you stories from your neighborhood and from across the globe as well. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the like button and press the bell icon so you don't miss any of our videos.